Welcome, darlings. It's always so good to be with you. I'm taking a moment to settle in into this conversation with you and allowing other peoples to join. I see every single comment that you share. You say perfect timing. I agree. It's always a perfect timing for us. <laughs> I'm here with you, my loves. I'm here with you. I felt this topic coming through my heart. And I am playing music in the background. I hope it's pleasant for your ears and you can still hear me okay. <laughs> Let me know how's the sound, darlings. How's the sound? <sighs> you see my fancy microphone? <laughs> you're joining in the beautiful time you know I just wanted to have this conversation with you from heart to heart and to have a conversation um, I always ask myself if I could only share one message and I had a group of people maybe it's 20 people or a thousand people what would be the most important message I could share and it's the message about how to source a real sense of strength and a sense of fortitude. I really love that word, fortitude. One of my spiritual teachers gave me that word. Fortitude is a sense of inner strength where you feel like you can't keep going forward and you summon, you call the strength of your ancestors. You call the strength of your spiritual team and something unlocks in you and you continue moving forward with a smile, with the inner smile. And then this, you know, this fortitude becomes your superpower that keep carrying you really, really far. So I'm in a really, really good place, my loves, really happy blissful place right now it's an oasis chapter of my life you know and uh, just like you we have these oasis chapters and then we have trial by fire chapters and then we have integration chapters right life moves in these transitions in these different phases and the one thing the number one secret that I, I continue to lean in and continue to share where I source my sense of fortitude, resilience, empowerment, strength is my connection to the feminine side of the divinity. My connection to the feminine side of God. And I rarely use the word God because so many people, including myself, carry huge religious scars, huge religious wounds. So the word God can be very activating, right? So I use the word feminine face of the divine, divine mother. And I wanted to share with you that experience and how I understand that experience, how I understand that that huge feminine power of source consciousness and how my life has completely transformed once I've made a conscious connection with the cosmic mother. You know, just like many of you, I was uh, fed a story and the image of divinity is a white man sitting somewhere on the cloud uh, watching every move of mine rewarding me with bonus points if I am a good girl and, you know, creating a punishment plan for me when I step outside of the rules. 
let me know in the comments if you had that image of divinity uh, <laughs> shuffled down your throat since childhood or maybe since teenage years or maybe your community. So for a lot of people, it brought a lot of trauma and actually created more separation than unity, right, darlings? And what I've discovered through uh, so many years, over 15 years of being on, on deep spiritual path and deep healing of the soul, experimenting with different tools and modalities, what I've discovered, darlings, is this the deep, deep hole in the human heart when there is not established or reestablished connection with divinity. And since the image of a white man on the clouds punishing you for your sins, right? Uh, that image creates traumatic response in the body. We almost don't know where to go, right? So for me, my way back to spirituality after a traditional religion, um, I went back through Buddhism. Buddhism was like a gentle entrance way. By traditional Buddhist philosophy, they don't believe in the concept of supreme divinity. You know, they really help you realize yourself, right? So there was something else missing for my soul, precisely. I kept looking, I kept searching, and my soul guided me towards one of the most ancient spiritual lineages called shamanism. And shamanism is a spiritual practice that sees every living thing in the universe as having divine essence. So a tree is not just a tree. It's a tree. It's a wisdom keeper of the forest, right? Animals are not just animals. So birds are not just animals. They're representatives of the goddess Gaia, the planet Gaia. The moment I said that, my feline companion, Gracie, stepped out from her nap and wa is walking towards me. So you can't even make this stuff up. So I was guided towards a spiritual lineage called shamanism. It's one of the most ancient spiritual traditions. Gracie, I was just talking about you. <laughs> okay, say hi. Say hi, Gracie. <laughs> We just, I was just talking about you, baby girl. So she wanted to make an appearance, darlings. So when I, when I was guided to shamanism, for me, it was such a remembrance. Shamanism is all about sacredness. It's not running in the woods naked. You know, it's not about that. It's about developing this reverent attitude towards everything that you meet on the path you know it's this quality of reverence right when you uh, walk through the forest you witness these standing people called trees and then eventually you begin to communicate to them and you begin to tap in into that intelligence that the trees have and then you begin to interact with the elements you begin to interact with the spirit of the wind, with the spirit of fire, with the spirit of the ocean, right? So you begin to build relationship with the natural forces. And ancient civilizations, such as civilization of Lemuria, before the Atlantis, there was this incredibly advanced civilization called Lemuria. And one day I will create a live stream about origin of humanity. It's building in me, darlings. It's building in me. I don't want to rush the process, but it is my intention to bring you a whole transmission about the origin of humanity, that we are not the first race on the planet Earth. There were races of humanity, entire race that were existing before our present civilization. So there were these um, incredible civilization called Lemurians, and they were masters, masters of connecting with the forces of nature. And so they were able to command the wind, command the rain, command the snow, right? They were in such 
communion with the elements, not by force, by through relationship with the elements. So this is why when I discovered or remembered shamanism, it was the most congruent path for my soul. And it's this element of reverence where you begin to look at everything in the universe alive, having an intelligence, and you begin to see that life itself has a self-organizing qualities. Life has a flow, right? You know, and you can see the, the flow in the mystery of life. For example, it is not up to us to decide when love enters our life. We can want it, we can visualize it, we can write the lists, and the love enters our life when it's time for it. And you cannot will it to happen. So this is one of, the, one of those things, you know, the mystery of death, the mystery of life, and the mystery of love. It's outside of our control. It's something that we can only approach with reverence, with incredible sense of seren serenity and surrender. So, darlings, it's been really powerful, you know. So I, I was, I found shamanism, and uh, you know, really working with the nature intelligence, learning to read the signs of the nature, and then I was guided to working with different visionary plants that open up your consciousness, that open up your ability to perceive. And when I start working with the plant medicines, I began to allow my psychic gifts to come online. All of us have abilities that are beyond, you know, these regular senses. We all have capacity to develop extrasensory abilities, and they're very effective, you know, to, 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 have, uh, to have your uh, ability of telepathy activated and constantly being online is very, very effective. I can send somebody a message telepathically, and it's just, it's so powerful. It's so, so useful, right? So the moment I start allowing my psychic gifts come online, and developing these abilities, I begin to perceive a different face of the divinity. And once again, for those of you who are joining right now, I was sharing my journey back to my connection with divinity and specifically with the feminine side of the divinity. Some call it the goddess, you know, some call it um, divine mother. This is the terminology that I resonate the most. And darlings, um, if you just join, I've been sharing that, you know, that idea of the God that was shuffled down my throat since childhood, you know, a white man sitting on the cloud, controlling your life, punishing, creating the punishment plan. That is, you know, for any educated person that just doesn't fit any kind of frames of reality. You begin to question it, right? If you have any sense of reason. But then what happens is um, there is not much alternative presented, right? So it can be a lot of confusion. So when I found the feminine face of the divinity, I really found the true healing of my heart because, you know, I found my healing with Divine Mother. And I really hope I'm conveying this in the way that it reaches the ones who, you know, for whom this message was reached. But it's, you know, it's that healing, especially if you didn't have a close relationship with your mother. Maybe it was inconsistent love that you were receiving from your mother. And maybe your mother was such a mess that she wasn't able to give you a true parenting right? A real parenting. And you were the mother for your mother. How many, how many stories like that I've heard from the people I met on my path? I was a little, little adult. You know, my mom was a mess when she was, you know, parenting me. She was only 22 when she brought me to the world. You know, she had a lot of fear when she was pregnant with me because my dad got into the accident when my mom only was five months pregnant with me. My dad got into the accident driving uh, and one person whom he hit 
died on the spot. My dad got sent into jail. His career was over. So when my mom was pregnant, she had this massive trauma that imprinted me into the womb. And when my mom gave birth to me, she really was not equipped to be a parent. You know, and it's just a realistic statement. And how many of you guys had parents like that? And there's nobody to blame or to judge. It's just to simply look back with objectivity, which created a wound because your mother is your first love. Your mother is your first experience of life. So whatever is your relationship with your mother, is your, it's a mirror of your relationship with life. So there is a deep, deep healing happens when you begin to remember and to realize that God is not masculine man sitting on the cloud, right? That the divinity is absolute, that has both the feminine essence and the masculine essence. It's like, you know, the, the, the feminine side of the divinity, for me, it's all about, it's all about life right? It's a creation, creative force. So I sometimes use the metaphor of our universe contains in the womb of the divine mother. So take this in, darlings. The moment you grasp that, I know it's a big metaphor to grasp. But the moment you grasp that, what I realized, my nervous system instantly relaxes. Because at any point, we must make a decision. How do we see this universe? Is it a chaotic, mechanical thing that randomly happened in, you know, in the cosmos? And we're just like floating in the space without direction, uh, constantly in danger of being hit by the comet? Or are we an intelligent, self-organizing creation held safely in the cosmic womb of the divine mother. There comes a point where that answer inside your heart will affect everything. You know, how safely you feel in the universe, how safely you can trust your path, how safely you can take risks in life. And if, you're, if, if our relationship with divinity is not healed, if we had a lot of religious trauma, right? That idea of punishing God is so scarred our psyche. We will carry the wound of not trusting life. And that wound will color everything, darlings. You know, that wound will color our relationships our, you know, creativity, because we will hold something back. We will not release all our genius. We will not release all our potential, right? Because something deep in us will feel, I cannot trust the direction of life. Another way to say it, you know, sometimes I describe divine mother is life itself. It's, um, I'm taking you a little bit further and just try it on. Once again, don't believe anything I say. Feel it with your body. And I'm simply sharing from my experience, the deepest healing of my heart was healing of my relationship with divinity and healing my relationship with the divine mother that my heart always was longing for. You know, the divine mother that my earth, my... Uh, my biological mother could never be for me. And my biological mother was the precisely the mother that I needed to begin my search for divine cosmic mother, for the divine feminine face of the divinity, the goddess. So I give you a lot. I wonder if you're still with me. Hi, darlings. <laughs> are, you still, are you still with me? I wanted to share that topic because, you know, um, I work in my private practice, I work with visionary minds. I work with people who are up to really, really big things in the world. And, you know, the number one thing that I guide them towards remembering is their connection with divinity. 
but once again, connection with benevolent divinity. Because remember, um, how does a mother love? How does a mother love a child? Truly unconditionally. A mother, true mother that loves a child will allow a child to move half across the way from her to find his or her path in life. The same thing, divine mother, the cosmic mother that birthed us, allows us in human expression to go on an adventure that we call 3D reality, called separation. So we know ourselves in a new way. Human planet, pla <laughs> human planet, planet Earth is a planet for advanced, brave souls that came here to master powerful lessons that you cannot master in the spirit world. You know what I mean, darlings? So we volunteer to come here. We truly volunteer. And we all the different stages of remembrances. So imagine that our world is the cosmic womb of the Divine Mother. And each one of us is, is a soul that Divine Mother birthed to existence. When I connect with that, I feel so safely held, you know, so safely held. And then every morning when I wake up, my first connection is with my Divine Mother. I lay in my bed and I sometimes I put a hand on my heart. Sometimes I hold the crystal, you know, it just depends on the day. But the first time, you know, once I download into the body, because when we sleep at night, we travel astrally, right? We travel into other dimensions. When we wake up, we download into the body. So the, the easier and more gentle is your awakening. That's why the alarm clocks are so jarring for our psyche, because we'll literally descend back into the body from the astral world every single night, darlings. You know, there is a, there is a, there is a story that uh, <laughs> the, only, the only reason why we volunteer to come to the planet Earth, because we know every night, we have the eight hour break from all earthly con concerns and we fly into the spirit world. And a lot of us sometimes remember our dreams. Some of us don't remember the dreams, but trust me, you travel into spirit worlds when you are sleeping. And if you become more aware and more intentional about it, you know, what I do, I ask my masters of light and angels and ascended masters that I work with I give them my conscious permission to recalibrate all my subtle bodies while I sleep. And I say, take me to your uh, spirit planes and download new codes and new blueprints of information that can assist my evolution. So, you know, I'm all about efficiency, darlings. I love efficiency. And you can, you can apply the same thing. Uh, but I remember for years, I would... My intention was to simply remember my dreams. And every night before I, go, I went to sleep, I said, it is my conscious intention to clearly remember my dreams. You know, and I was practicing what is uh, in Tibetan tradition, it's called dream yoga, where you stretch your capacity to consciously travel in the dream world. If you begin to lucid dream, you begin your awakening journey. Usually lucid dreaming, when you become aware that you're dreaming in the dream, that's the first signal that you, your consciousness begins to awaken, right? And then you, then you begin to wonder, what is the dream? Is that reality a dream or that reality a dream? Well, they, they're both kind of passing dreams, right? So, but I regress. But all of that is useful. If I, if I could... This is the question that inspired this live stream. If I only had one topic and I could share one message that would help others to become, to feel most, more safely held in this universe of change, transition, and unknown on every corner, 
I would encourage everybody to begin to connect with the feminine face of the divinity. I call it my divine cosmic mother. And this is, this is what I would encourage everybody to connect. And you do it through connecting with your heart. Because your heart is a multidimensional portal through which you can travel in your parallel lifetimes, in your past lives, right? Your heart is a portal through which you connect to the face, to the feminine face of God. And even though the word God still doesn't resonate for me, because a lot of religious um, scars and a lot of religious wounding with that word. So I will say the feminine face of the source consciousness. That feels more good. You choose the term that works for you. And, you know, when you study great, um, I was sharing, for those of you who just joined, darlings, I was sharing uh, my personal journey towards spiritual lineage of shamanism. And then I was also studying the great religions, the great earlier, earlier uh, religions of uh, worshiping the goddess, you know, the very, very first cultures when they were worshiping uh, the goddess energy. And what I learned about all the books that I read on this topic, there is a great book called The Great Mother. I highly, it's, it's this big, it's, it's really huge. It's a book that you will have in your library for the rest of your life. And it's going to open your eyes. It's going to shift your paradigms massively about how the idea of a male version of God was literally a program inserted in society, right? So it will open up a lot of pathways for you. It's called the great mother. But out of everything I took away from it, it was a confirmation that the deepest healing of the soul happens when there is a healing of the wound of a human heart and the divinity. And when that happens, you begin to relax into life. You begin to feel deeply held by the hands of the divine mother. Not, you, you know what I mean, darlings? It's a, it's a huge difference from the punishing God who is watching over you, counting every wrong move that, you met, that, you've, that you've made to this feminine energy of nurturing, nourishing source of divine guidance, divine wisdom, divine support that is watching over you, that loves you without condition. How different the energy feels. And then, you know, all that is ever required from us is to take a tiny step forward towards spirit. I often call uh, source consciousness spirit because spirit for me encompasses both the feminine side of the divinity and the masculine side of the divinity because it has both. Spirit has both, right? So if you ever hear me refer to the divinity spirit, that's what I mean by that. This animating uh, divine intelligence. So all that is required is to make this conscious step towards divinity, right? And how I do it every morning, I, I, I verbally out loud say my thanks. And I say, Divine Mother, thank you for another day. May I be useful to you today? May I use, um, I say, guide me, you know, guide my steps, guide my thoughts, illuminate my heart. Help me to become more compassionate. Help me see what I don't see yet. And it's this genuine conversation with divinity that my heart was longing for for so long that have been separated through religious trauma. And you know, when you come back to that healing space with divinity, your life begins to expand, you know, in prosperity, in alignment, in new sense of resilience, new sense of confidence that you know that your life has a purpose, has a meaning, and a very specific storyline, a very specific kind of a thread of destiny, right? And you begin to relax your uh, attempts to control the flow. You cannot control the river. 
this always humbles me. You know, every time I go and I find the river, I live by the ocean, darlings. Every day I wake up and I see the ocean. And I also love rivers. Rivers have a different energy. They remind me of a different kind of a, because, you know, everything has spirit. River spirit has a very different vibration. When I sit by the river, I am humbled with remembrance that you cannot push the river. You know, no matter how strong of a human you imagine yourself to be, no matter how much you create your reality, and you do, I like to express that you co-create your reality. You co-create your reality with the flow of life, right? With the Divine Mother. You know, you bow down to the mystery of life and you begin to cultivate this precious frequency of reverence, of reverence, you know? And you begin to emanate that frequency of reverence. You begin to release this control, right? And you tap into that super flow that the Zen masters were talking about. They say, when you do nothing, and you accomplish everything. And there will be moments where the old sense of panic and old sense of fear will arise out of your body. That's okay. As long as you don't identify with that, you just say, oh, it's something arising. Let me get curious about it. I just discovered the old vibration in my body. But you continue to cultivate the deep intimacy with the feminine side of life, if you don't resonate with the term divine mother, maybe it's too far out for you. That's all right. The feminine side of life, you begin to see that life has intelligence. Life has a self-organizing flow. You either be in flow, in harmony with that, or you be out of flow and create a lot of resistance, right? <laughs> You are still with me. <laughs> uh, I wanted to bring this topic for a really long time, darlings. I was like, when I'm going to come out of this? And this is the reason why, you know, um, I am not Christian, right, darlings? I am not, I don't belong to any religion. I was a Christian for 10 years, darlings. And I love Jesus. I appreciate, no, no, let's just call Jesus how, by his true name, Jeshua. I appreciate the legacy of Jeshua. I studied esoteric Christianity. I studied mystical side of Christianity, you know, where you dig deep into the mysticism of a true story of Jeshua and his beloved Magdalene and the sacred union. Because, you know, the story that was presented to us, Jeshua, this aesthetic man, you know, the celibate mystic, perfect teacher, right? The only path to God. Every time you hear the only path to God, you know it is not truth. That's all I'm going to say. It's a distortion of truth. I've been always fascinated by the mystical side of, of Kabbalah, like uh, Kabbalah, right? The mystical side of um, Jewish religion. And then the mystical, side, um, the mystical side of Christianity, right? The Sufism, oh, I resonate with so much. But darlings, if we dig deep, we understand the, the, the true legacy of Jesus, of Jeshua was to bring this new frequency of vibration of love, right? And to ground it in and to, to bring this new, he, he was the, the pioneer of this new consciousness, new transcendental consciousness. And he was continually redirecting people towards finding divinity within. So if you read the mystical side of the story of Joshua, you will be just in awe, right? That he, he had a deep connection with the feminine side of divinity. He, had, he was an initiate of the Divine Mother. But you know, some people in power in the past did not want this truth to be known. 
You know, it was hidden from us that Joshua spent years, the lost years of Jesus, right? Uh, there's like 13 years missing from the story where he was initiate of in Egypt, studying esoteric teaching, studying alchemy, magic, all of that. So I always encourage you to question everything, question the hard truths, you know, always check in with your body and find the connection with the higher power that nourishes your heart. And especially if you had a lot of religious trauma, be patient with yourself. Be patient with yourself. My way was uh, to come back to divinity through Buddhism, because Buddhism was so safe. Buddhism said, hey, we're not claiming we are the only path to God. Oh my God, we don't even believe in God. <laughs> Buddhism, right? They say, we just going to show you how to find stillness in your inner world. And if this resonates with you, find your path. Yes, exactly. Yes, darling. So I see your comments. Exactly. So the story that was presented to us, you know, like, I am so excited to share with you that live stream about the origin of humanity. It's coming, it's coming through because I see you reson resonate. The, the written story that was presented to us always felt like a lie to me, you know, since I was very little, I was like, I, this is, this is a bunch of, you know, stories. What is the real journey of humanity? What is the real journey of humanity? On this note, darlings, my encouragement to you, uh, a simple practice, right? Because this is all good conversation. What would be the practice for you? I encourage you to experiment with making contact. Just imagine that you can put a warm blanket of love energetically on your shoulders. Let's do this together. Let's, do, let's close our eyes right now. I have my Lemurian crystals with me. Where is my second one? Here it is. Let's do this ritual together. It's a very simple one. You know, the reason we closed our eyes, so we go deep within. And you just imagine there's this beautiful rose gold energetic blanket of love descends from above you and lays on your shoulders. And this is just a visual representation of divine love. You know, that divine love that doesn't want to punish you, that doesn't even want to tell you how to live your life. Divine love that loves you truly without condition. You begin to, if you're kinesthetic, imagine it as a wave of warmth. If you are visual, imagine the shimmering shawl on your shoulders made of rose gold frequency. And the reason why I often work with the gold frequency, it's a high vibration frequency that instantly purifies, heals, and upgrades your energy field. So you can use this tool every time you feel a little bit overwhelmed, or maybe exhausted on your path, or maybe just need a little companionship, and no human can give you the deep soul companionship with the divine as divine can. And imagine that you can say, 
in your heart. Divine Mother, I desire to feel your love. I desire to know you, your wisdom, your protection, and your guidance. And when you're ready, you can open your eyes. This is how simple you can begin talking to the universe. Entire universe is the womb of the Divine Mother. When you begin to walk, to talk to the universe, the universe begins to cooperate with you in a completely new way. It begins to play with you, engage with you, dance with you. Imagine if the universe is feminine. Just imagine what if, what if... The universe is feminine in nature. How would you interact with the feminine? No wonder that our life is mystery. The feminine is mystery. Just imagine, just try it on, see how it feels. Then, you know, when I contemplate on that, I connect with the ecstatic heart that has always been at the core of my soul. You know, I connect with the spirit of Rumi and Hafiz and all those Sufi mystics who, you know, connect with the beloved within, which is with divine, pure connection with divinity within. And then you realize that your life is not something to figure out. Your life is here to be lived in reverence to the mystery and a beautiful ecstasy of joy and trust. And when you have that connection with the feminine face of the universe, you begin to laugh at the cosmic joke of it all. You begin to let go of control. You begin to become more playful. You begin to relax your nervous system, open up your chakras, open up your spine. And then something truly magical happens. You begin to see the face of the divinity in everyone you meet. Not from the lack of intellect, but from the lack of true embodiment. Ah, oh, darlings. <laughs> I feel this is where I'd love to conclude i recommend for you a book that will change the way you see the world change the way you see god change the way you see feminine divine feminine and all of that it is called the great mother and it's incredible book you can find it on amazon i recommend everybody to read this book simply through the point of curiosity and being an educated human being who is committed to expanding his paradigms. And then you can decide on your relationship with divinity. You have an educated decision based on this various perspectives. So I love, love, love these conversations with you, my loves. Thank you for the gift of your presence. Thank you for, um, thank you for the gift of your presence. <sighs> You're still here. <laughs> so this is what gives me inspiration. You know, when people ask me, Katarina, how do you always have these topics of conversations and live streams channeling? It is because I cultivate the number one relationship that is the most important in my life. And it's my relationship with me and the feminine side of the universe. The feminine side of the divinity, my divine mother that birthed me into existence. You know, uh, if, you, if you just imagine um, as above, 
so below, right? As above, so below. The hermetic secret teachings, universal law. So our earthly life is a, is a small mirror of a spirit world, right? So if our now earthly life, woman gives birth to life, what would be possible if the universe is feminine in nature? Just planting a seed in your mind for your contemplation so you can find your truth. It could be your quest and your discovery. Because when you find that illumination from your own discovery, nobody can take away that from you. It's going to be real to your heart, real to your experience. And then the magic happens. This universe becomes truly a magical playground with limitless possibilities where you feel deeply held in the womb of your Divine Mother. On this note, I will wrap up this transmission. Thank you for the gift of your presence. Like always, if you desire to learn more about my work, I finally have a website. That's right. I released it seven months ago. And it is my name, www.katerinasatori.com. So check out my work. And if you feel inspired to share this video, I always encourage that. And I'm always grateful for every single comment that you leave. Thank you. And I will see you very, very soon, darlings. Be blessed.